you guys will find out if you hear later in the news Anna is lost but found, got lost permanently, then you'll know why. I told him that I had to work. He was like, okay, but there's this lake that I really want to show you. And I was like, uh, and I'm like a little weirded out. The story I'm about to tell you is not a fun, light-hearted topic. It's a serious one. But I would like to confront it in the best way possible, and that is by showing you both the bad and the good. The dangers and the nice possibilities of not only traveling, but of life itself. By sharing my story, I'm hoping for a few things. Firstly, to be able to vent and get this all off my chest. Secondly, to show you that there are things that we can all do to reduce our chances of finding ourselves in dangerous situations. And lastly, to show others who have experienced the same thing I have that they are definitely not alone. Your voice means something. Speak up, even if you think nobody will hear you. You have the right to be heard and believed in. I get it. Sometimes we trust people who shouldn't be trusted. But like I said, this is a two-sided story. I just had a pretty long work day, <laughs> the weirdest work day I've ever had in my life. Um, I worked half of my classes in his uh, car. He left and he dropped me off here and I gave the rest of my classes sitting on the grass in the park that's right next to the river. It was, I don't know, the weirdest work day I've ever had. <laughs> okay. Hold on one second, I just want to pause the story right there very quickly. Hi, my name is Anna, present day Anna. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of complete and fill in some details into that segment. Uh, I'm just gonna get right down to it. It was not a good experience. It was the wrong decision to trust this stranger. I was essentially, and I'm not gonna say essentially, I was sexually assaulted. Sorry if I laugh a lot throughout this. I just want to take this as lightly as possible. I'm not doing this for the pity for people to feel sorry for me. I want to tell this story just to raise awareness and to show people that it's something very common and more common than people think. Okay, I'm just gonna get straight into the story. I don't want to linger too much on the details because I don't think that's necessary. And if you missed my last video, here's a quick recap. Basically, I had just arrived to Avignon, I stayed in a hostel the next morning, I went out to explore the city, I was in front of the post castle, and this old man walks up to me and tells me how beautiful the castle is in French, and I answer him also in French, agreeing with him, and he heard my accent, I guess. He asks, oh, you're not from here? And I say, no, I'm not from here. Regular old small talk. He ends up inviting me to go see like the balcony area that's right behind the castle. So I kindly accepted. I thought, wow, this is a very cute, innocent old man. Ladies and gentlemen, he was not a cute, innocent old man. So. I go up and behind the castle, he shows me the beautiful view of the Rhone River. Then he invites me for coffee, I say sorry, I have to go pick up my stuff, and he's like, no really, it'll just take a couple of minutes, just sit down. We go to the coffee shop that was on the balcony and it was closed, and he said, okay, it's fine, we can still sit down for a few minutes and, and talk. And because Anakari, because little innocent Anna cannot say no to anyone. We go sit down. He saw my ukulele and he asked me to play a song. He was like, come on, just one song. He insisted, okay, I played a song. He saw that I was blogging. So he said, oh, so do you record videos of your, with your ukulele? I said, yeah, I do actually, I make some covers. And he said, there's this beautiful place I think you're gonna love and it's gonna be perfect to record one of your videos. And I said, well, I mean, I really, really have to go. He insisted that we actually go to a coffee shop and get something to drink right after I came out from getting my stuff back from the hostel. I agreed. So I just came back to the hostel to get the rest of my things that I had left behind. I met a guy, well, a man that was walking outside of the castle. This is a good example of why traveling alone has its advantages and disadvantages. A disadvantages because you're putting yourself into the hands of a stranger. You have to be really careful to trust your instinct. When I watched that footage, I noticed that my instinct was telling me something, but I just didn't want to listen to it, I guess. But I agreed to go with him anyway. He took me across the river 
and to a beautiful sunflower field. It was actually one of the most beautiful places I had seen on my trip, so I was in awe. After I finished filming on my drone and on my camera, I asked him to take some videos of me playing on my ukulele, which are literally unusable. After that, I had realized that I didn't take a picture of myself in the sunflower field, so I turned the drone towards me, he walks up to me, and puts his hand around my shoulder. And I was just kind of like, uh, what's happening? That's exactly the moment that I was talking about when I was in his car and he... And I mentioned that I felt a little bit weird and a little bit uncomfortable. He invited me to go see a lake and I told him, I have to work. He said, come on, it's really close. And I said, I really have to work. I have to go find a cafe. He said, but you have your laptop and you have your Wi-Fi with you, you might, your portable Wi-Fi. And I said, yes, that's true. And he said, so? And my little brain said, oh crap, you're out of excuses. Since Anna cannot say no, we ended up going to this lake in his car and I was sitting there in a, in a car, giving classes in a car, this old man's car. He comes up to the window every five seconds or so, <laughs> well, like every 10 minutes or so, and asking me if I'm already done or whatever. He was very insistent and very, very acting very fishy and I just literally did not know how to get out of the situation. I finished my classes, he proceeds to tell me, you have to see this amazing lake, come here. He insisted that we take a picture together in front of the lake. I don't even know what to say about that. I'm stuck in a situation, how do I get out of here? Maybe I have an escape plan, but when you're in a situation, you don't really think about your escape plan. So he proceeds to tell me, this little path is very beautiful. It's, it was a little tiny path with trees covering both sides. Nobody was around except for the fishermen that were next to the lake. We go into this little path and he stops me. I'm not going to get into details like I said, but this old man that earned my trust at first, invited me to get some coffee, talked with me for a while, insisted to take me to this beautiful place. This old man sexually assaulted me. And that is very difficult to say because I've never, <laughs> I've never said anything like that on camera before. Yeah, he touched me in places where he should not have touched me. He did things to me that he should not have done to me, that I did not agree to, that I did not accept. And he insisted, he insisted, and he insisted. So, I don't know how, but somebody else saved me from this his phone rang and he had to answer as soon as he got that phone call he immediately rushed to the car he said oh i'm so sorry i have to go but hey i would love to see you tomorrow at this time at this place and i'm going to get you a cadeau and my french wasn't very good at that time so i didn't know what he was talking about i translated it on my phone and i realized he wants to give me a gift she was like yeah come on it's just what i want to do for you you're just so beautiful you're so uh, insert a bunch of other vulgar words here after that we went back to the bridge and he dropped me off and he asked me for one last kiss um i just thought you know let me just get it over with i want this guy to leave already i'm never gonna see him again in my life i don't care about his freaking kado him trying to be whatever sugar daddy or whatever and then this happened i feel so stupid right now i just realized that i left my jacket like the the where the ah so frustrated uh i left my jacket like the white hoodie thingy in, in the guy's car the <laughs> car <sighs> um i don't know what i'm gonna do <sighs> thinking back to how i felt in that moment and how i reacted to that i remember feeling so embarrassed and so dirty and so ashamed of myself and that's so sad and yeah that makes me I want to take this as lightly as possible, like I said, I don't want to cry, I don't want to make this like a pity talk or anything like that. But I think about how ashamed I felt of myself and how disgusting I felt that it makes me really sad to think that I even felt like I was the one to blame. You see, if nothing like this has ever happened to you, if you've never experienced sexual assault, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, nothing of the sorts, 
you will probably think one of the following things. I mean, come on. First, you accept getting into a stranger's car, and then you cry about getting hurt. Why did you do that? Like, you should have done something completely different. Like, why did you even accept? You shouldn't have accepted in the first place. You're so stupid. You don't know him. You don't know where he's been. You don't know what intentions he had for you. So, if you think like this, uh, I understand you. I understand where you're coming from. Why? Because I thought this too. I thought, oh, well, it was my fault. I'm the one to blame. And then I realized something. I realized how powerful victim blaming is. Something bad happened to that girl. Oh, because she was drunk. Because she was wearing something too skimpy. She was flirting with the guy. Why were you wearing that dress? Why did you accept? Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you tell me before? I could have helped you. Why didn't you just run away? It's all crap. Let's set up a situation. There's a chef, right? This chef makes a delicious cake, a mouth-watering cake, and a person sees the cake, says, Wow, I'm gonna go a step further. Hmm. Grabs a little bit of frosting, grabs a big chunk. <sighs> chef turns around, says, What the heck is your problem? Why are you eating my cake? That's my masterpiece. How dare you? Well, hey, dude, I'm not the one that made a delicious mouth-watering looking cake. If you didn't want me to eat it, you wouldn't make it look so mouth-watering. And wow, oh my gosh, like now I understand how wonderful your logic is. Thinking that the chef was to blame. What if, let's say, he put that cake, that delicious mouth-watering looking cake, in the middle of a group of starving children? How in the world are they going to resist their urges? It's impossible. Let me tell you something. What would you do if you were in the middle of a street and you have your phone in your hand and some random robber comes and takes that phone from you. Is that your fault because you're holding your phone in your hand? I personally do not think so. Some people would argue, well, yeah, of course, if you're in a dangerous area, if you're in a dangerous zone, then of course you shouldn't have your phone walking around, flaunting it everywhere. Maybe I didn't even realize that this zone was dangerous. Yeah, I should have done my investigation beforehand, but well, I didn't and it's too late now. I just want to leave you with that note. Just think about it next time you try to victim blame next time you try to say of course that woman is asking to be raped because she's waltzing naked in the street that woman is asking for it that man is asking for it it's all crap something else i want to add is <laughs> hollywood is very very tricky with a lot of things it gives you a lot of misconceptions about reality and I'm not only talking about, oh, romance and oh, all this stuff, but of everything. And that includes what rape is like or what sexual assault is like. Years ago, when I would picture in my head any kind of sexual assault abuse or rape, I would picture a very forceful person locking down, holding down somebody and forcing them to do something or maybe they had been kidnapped or locked up and they were their prisoners or their slaves and they forced them to do things with them, blah blah blah. This is what I imagined. Let me tell you something. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Because abusers, perpetrators, what they do is they try to gain your trust. That's where it comes in and it's proven. There are well-known statistics that prove that most rape victims, most sexual assault victims, their abusers were family or friends. I don't know if I'm just the only crazy one that thought that that's what rape was, that oh my gosh, well yeah, if I don't go to parties, if I don't go and get drunk, if I don't put myself in, you know, a really crazy uh, situation, like oh, if I avoid all of that, then I will be safe. But that's just not the case. I understand if you do not agree with me because it's just a part of a bunch of cultures. It's not just one culture. It's not in one part of the world or another. This is an international problem. And the only way that we can face that, and that's my proposition, is to raise more awareness and make people understand that it is never the victim's fault. I hope that I was able to shed at least a little bit of light on the situation. But like I said, this is not a sob story. I want to show you two sides of the situation, traveling, and life in general, not only traveling, can be an amazing thing <laughs> to live, to have different experiences, to meet different people, can be amazing. And you never know what to expect from anybody that you ever encounter. So let's move on to the next part of the story, shall we? Just to recap, I had been left without a hostel, I had no accommodation because I had not planned this trip 
at all. I need to find a place to stay because the lady from Couchsurfing hasn't answered me. So I'm pretty sure she's not going to answer me. So I'm either going to have to rent a hostel or look desperately on Couchsurfing again. But I think I'm going to go for the first option, of course. So it's cool because I was flying my drone and I met this guy and he was like, uh, oh cool, I want to fly a drone too. And, and he thought that I was like a professional. So I, I felt really cool, very professional at flying a drone, which I'm not, but I'm learning and I'm learning more every day. Now I have to climb up this huge flight of stairs to get back to Avignon. I was just planning on staying that one night and then going back to Lyon the next day. So all I needed was accommodation for that one night. I shot this guy that I met a message and this happened. Okay, so uh, I'm a little bit relieved because I asked the guy that I was flying the drone with over by the river if he know anybody that could host me tonight. And he said he did, that he was going to contact a couple of friends. And if not, that he had an extra mattress, I'll probably just crash at his place. Unless I get an answer from the couch surfing lady, but she hasn't answered all day. I'm really doubting she's going to answer. If she hasn't answered by now, it's already... 7.30. I don't think she's gonna answer. That's my evening so far. I will keep you updated later. So he ended up telling me that he couldn't meet me right away, but he we scheduled a time to meet up at a restaurant. I'm honestly so thankful that he said this because, well, I had just experienced something not so pleasant and he was being very kind and just, it seemed like it was just being nice to be nice. And yeah, I'll just give you spoilers. It was. It was only to be nice. No bad intentions. Okay, so my new friend is gonna pick me up from here from Place de, de la Pop. Papa. I, I keep forgetting what it's called. So we ended up meeting somewhere. I remember we did that whole like apéro like thing that French people do and I had to get some work done on the computer. So I was on the computer in the middle of our little talk uh, over drinks and stuff. After that, he actually invited me to dinner, which I thought was very generous. Merci. He lived with his mom, so his mom welcomed me with open arms. She was the sweetest person in the world. So I ended up sleeping at his mom's house for that night. And the next morning, he invited me to go to the beach with one of his best friends. So I said, well, I have two options. I could either, one, go pick up my jacket from this old guy and not go to the beach. Or option number two, I could go to the beach, forget about this loser, and not let him waste my time. And well, I decided kind of a balance in between. I told my friend about this. I was too embarrassed to tell him that something actually happened. I just told him, oh, it was he was kind of creepy and he kissed me on the cheek and I showed him the pictures. And uh, he was like, oh, he's, he's a creep. He probably wants something from you. And I'm like, no, not probably, he does. But I didn't say anything. I just stayed quiet and I said, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I told him that this guy wanted to meet at this time and actually I left my jacket in his car so I really want to get it back. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we decided to go to the cafe and meet this guy at the time that he had told me. He was there but I had arrived 30 minutes late. So I went up to him. When I'm stressed, I don't speak foreign languages. I forget everything that I learned and I was in a very, very awkward situation because I had told him, you know, these are my friends. I was with my host and his best friend and they were helping me translate and they were like translating, like talking to each other and they would talk to me. And basically what happened was I told him, I left my jacket in your car. I need to get it back because that's my only jacket. I don't have anything else. And this guy says, what jacket? You didn't leave any jacket in my car. The conclusion that my host came to was that gathering from all the information he received that he was a creep, that he was an old guy, um, that he was traveling alone, that he was probably married and he didn't want, 
you know, his wife to find a girl's jacket in his back seat. So he probably got rid of it somehow, some way, and there was no way that I was going to get that jacket back. But this old man, so humble, so kind, so generous, he offered that I accompany him to go shopping. And after we went shopping, we could go to his car and get my jacket back because he didn't see anything. But maybe it's there. You can check with me if you like, but I don't want your friends to go. So, you know, it's gonna just be me and you, hun. And I was like, it's not gonna be me and you ever, hun. So <laughs> I was very happy because I, I had like this backup. I felt a bit more confident and we supposedly scheduled a time where we're gonna meet at his car, all three of us, because uh, whatever. We just took all that to the side, threw it in the trash can, forgot about my freaking jacket, forgot about the freaking old dude, and we went to the beach and had fun. So we're on our way to the beach. I have my Who's backpack the beach? in here. Who's the <laughs> oh, yes, these are my new friends now. They helped me go look for the old guy and we found him and he was acting really weird. He was like, I feel really uncomfortable with them here. And I was like, why? Was like, well, because I, I, just, I just feel really uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, well, don't worry. You can keep my jacket. So I'm just gonna leave my jacket. Oh, well. I lost my jacket, so I'm gonna have to get another one. And it was an amazing time. I ended up having to stay not one, not two, not three nights. I don't even know how many nights, I can't remember, but you'll see in the upcoming videos how many nights I actually ended up staying with this kind stranger that I met out of nowhere that had no ill intentions, that I actually am the one that ended up hurting his feelings. All of this that I'm telling you does not only apply to traveling, to traveling alone. You could even experience good and bad things when traveling with groups of people or with a partner. It doesn't matter if you're traveling, if you're at home and just walking around in your own city. It doesn't matter what state you're in, what city you're in, what country you're in, who you're around, who you're with. It doesn't matter. It's like riding a car versus riding a motorcycle. People always say, riding a motorcycle is so dangerous, don't do it, you're gonna die. Not everyone that rides this motorcycle has accidents, and not everybody who has a car doesn't have accidents ever. There's always a, a bit of a risk, but obviously with some things, there's more of a risk. I'm not trying to say like, yeah, you're always gonna be safe, even if you travel alone, you're always gonna be safe. Every situation has its risks, and there are some situations with, which have more risks than others, but that's why we should take our precautions. Consider warning signs, don't ignore them, try to stay in public areas, always have a backup plan. All of that only in order to reduce your risk of getting stuck with a bad person that has ill intentions. It's never preventable, unfortunately. Yes, you are gonna meet very, very distasteful and not trustworthy people in this life and that's not only when you're traveling that's just in life in general i know i repeat this a lot but i can't stress it enough in life you are going to meet very bad people but also some people are going to surprise you i have been treated so so well by so many other people and i'm not gonna let these negative situations tear me down i'm no longer gonna let these bad experiences stop me from doing what I love. I'm going to continue to travel and I'm probably going to continue to travel alone, even knowing that these dangerous people exist out there because I know that I can trust in myself a bit more. I know that I have a bit more confidence in me now and I hope that you do too. I hope that you're able to grow your own confidence, your own self-worth and you're able to believe in yourself and know that even if you're stuck in a sticky situation, you will know what to do in an emergency and be able to handle the situation and I hope that you're able to surround yourself with positive people, like-minded people and not worry about being abandoned or being left behind because you know that you're in a good circle of friends even when you're traveling alone and that's why it's such an amazing thing to me because you meet so many amazing 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 people and I, I'm just so grateful for for all of the things that I've been given, for all the life lessons I've been taught. And I'm speaking from the heart here. This None of this video was scripted. I wanted to keep it as real as possible. And that's what I want to do with this channel. I've mentioned it before. I just, I really, really don't care how many people are able to see this. I just want to get my story out there and 
At least if one person watches and one person is affected, it'll make my day. And, well, stay safe, keep traveling, don't be afraid of adventure, give people a chance, but also love yourself and love who you are and what you are and do not be ashamed of yourself. Take any shame or guilt out of your mind and I will see you next time. That's enough cheesiness for today. <laughs>